equal to Vy over Izz Qz. Because it's box beam, right? You take this as uh, 2. The 2 over here because of 2Q. And then you divide by your thickness. So this is the what? Thickness. So the formula is very, very similar. Yes or no? The 2 over there is because you have Q going from one side, Q going on the other side. Okay. So now you can see some similarity between thick wall and thin wall analysis. Okay. Now, let's look at uh, uh, I-beam now. Okay. Let's look at I-beam. Yo, okay. Any question from online or face to face? Anyone? Any question? Uh, yeah. So, so in thin wall, uh, yes. we are also measuring at C, which is at the centroid, and we yes. don't have to take two T in this one too, because we have a, a, a thickness on both sides, right? On the, yeah, on our, but the uh, two consider is because of the Q. Q, yes. Okay. Whereas okay. the other side is twice the thickness. Oh, okay. I was thinking about like the, the, the first two will be because of the two Q and we, we have to use another two just because. No, the... you don't need to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Sorry, sir. Quick question. How do yes. we know which one is thickness? I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. So the thickness is always perpendicular to the shear flow. So if this is, this is any, okay, I, I, will, I will teach you an easy way to do this. Okay. So. It, it, the dark line I'm drawing now, right, is the material. Okay. Then I'm going to sketch the shear flow. You, right. So the shear, the thickness is always perpendicular to the shear flow. Okay. So this can be. If the shear flow is oriented in vertical, I will I will do another one. I will copy, and I will and it usually don't work. Okay, I don't know. I paste. I move this burger around, and then I rotate. There you go. If your Q is going in a horizontal direction, right on the figure on the right the thickness is going to be perpendicular. Is that better now? Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, yes. For thick wall. Yeah, because thick wall, you want to find the centroid over here. You have to consider T on the left-hand side and T on the right-hand side. Because the, the, the load is shared in between. One will take half the load, the other one will take the other half the load. Okay? Wait, let me see. Do we take the thickness of the flange as well? Uh, Gimmel, how do you mean? Can you speak up? Gimmel? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, it's just the, um, so, we're taking the both sides for the uh, thickness for the uh, flange, right? But what about the uh, what about the web, the top part? Do we do you you don't take it? the top part because you're interested at the centroid? Ah, I see. So okay. now point C is of interest. Mm, okay. But the first moment of area, you have to consider the flange also. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Right. So now. I think I would like to do a, a short example so you can visualize a box beam analysis better now. Okay. Yes. Say it again. You have to learn how to do it. I'm not going to draw the queue. I'm not going to draw the direction. You have to design the direction. Okay. Yes. Someone online have question? Anyone? Okay. Then I'm going to look into uh, one example. Okay. We're going to 
So we are going to look at an, a, a box dream example first, okay? Because I want you to to have the confidence of how to analyze a box beam first, okay? So we are going to do one example over here. Now these examples are available on Avenue, okay? Okay. So an extruded aluminum, let me write that this is example number one. Okay. An extruded aluminum has a cross section as shown, knowing that the vertical shear stress in the in a, the vertical shear in the beam is 150 kilonewton. Determine the stresses at point A and determine the stresses at point B. Okay, so this is our our Vy. Okay, I have our uh, our transformation. This is Y. And this is Z. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, teach you stuff that is very uh, you are, you are not sure because when I mark the term test, I realize some of you always use the same formula to find the centroid. Okay. Sometimes you don't need to calculate; you can observe due to what geometry. Okay. So for this case. Right. We know that the centroid, by observation, the centroid is exactly at the center. You don't need to calculate this. Okay. Now, how do I know? It's because when I draw that green line, the geometry at the top and the geometry at the bottom are exactly the what? The same. So you don't need to find the centroid, you just by observation. Are we clear? Okay, because a lot of time. When I mark your term test, I find like you are we are, you are always finding the same thing, okay, gluing the same procedure, but it's not necessary. You waste your time. Down here, we know the centroid within half a second. Are we clear? Okay. So this is our centroid. Okay. So like what I taught you guys, anything that's running horizontally now is the width. Anything that's running vertically, okay, to the to the uh, central axis, is the depth. Okay. So now what we want to do is the formula that we have to apply: is shear stress is equal to V Y over I Z Z Q Z divided by T. Okay. I hope by doing this problem, you realize that the mistake that you make in your term test. Okay, I, I, I hope to, to highlight that. Okay. Right, so we are going to find uh, the shear stress at point A, but before that, we have to find IZZ. Okay. So IZZ to find IZZ, uh, the width, I'm going to use 80. The depth is also 80, power of 3, divided by 12. So this over here is the outside square. Then I'm going to take out, okay, in the center part it's been removed, and you realize that the outside square and the inside square share, share the same what? Centroid. So the width now, is equal to 80 minus 12 minus 12. The depth now is 80 minus 6 minus 6. No, 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 no. What? Uh, yeah, 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 the depth. Yes. Okay. Cube divided by 12. 
So this is the inside square. So this will be equal to. Uh, hold on, I need to grab my calculator. Calculator when missing. I found my calculator. So this will be equal to 80 power 4 divided by 12. It's equal to 3.413 times 10 to power 6 minus 80 minus 12 minus 12 times by 80 minus 6 minus 6 power 3 divided by 12 is equal to Hey, one times by 80 minus 6 minus 6 close bracket power 3 12 is equal to 1.467. Hey, let me do it again, okay? 80 minus 12 minus 12. So this is 56. 80 minus 12. This is 68. So 56 times by 68 of 3 divided by 12, 1 by 4, 6, 7, correct, 3.413 of 6 by 1.467. So it's equal to 1.946 times 10 to power 6 uh, millimeter 4, or 1.946 times 10 to power 6 meter to power 4. Okay, so we found our second moment of area. Okay, so now we are going to find the shear stress. Okay, we're going to find a shear stress at point B. Okay, so we realize that this is going to be a box beam analysis. So now we construct our shear flow. As you know, that this is really, really straightforward. So one Q go to one side. I should practice what I preach. Design the web first and then do this. Okay. So one side go Q, the other side go to the other side. So you know, if you look at point A, right, one of the Q goes to the left, one of the Q goes to the right. I usually encourage you guys to write over here 2Q. Okay, right, that's the word 2Q down here. Okay. Then we are going to find the, no, no, we are going to find A first. Okay, sorry. Let's follow the question. Don't change. Okay. So we are going to find the area that I'm shading in black first, then we're going to find the first moment of area that I'm shading in orange after that. Okay. So Q. Relative to the z axis at point A is equal to so the width. So I'm going to take the the flange section. How how I divide the section? So 80 minus 12 minus 12. That's my width. Our width. Sorry. So it's 56 multiplied by a depth of six. The y bar is 80 divided by two. Minus by six divided by two. Okay. So let me check again. So 80 chop on one side. So so we know that the, the distance from here to here is 80 minus chop twice, which is 56, right? And then we know the thickness is six. 
and then we want to find this distance from here to here that distance is equal to uh, uh, 80 divided by 2 minus by 6 divided by 2 which is exactly what we have over here then